You are now watching Google TV. Hey guys, this is Mugen Lore here, and I want to talk a bit about DLC. Now, I know I may be beating a dead horse at this point because there are plenty of people in the YouTube gaming community who pretty much already touched this topic, but I thought, why not talk about it with my audience? Now, my question is concerning DLC, whether or not DLC is pretty much necessary for a game's lifespan and longevity. Now, I ask this question because I've been gaming since the early 90s. Now, I know some of you may not have been born just yet at this time, but there was a time where DLC just did not exist. Once you bought a game, that was pretty much the final version of that title. Hell, even patches didn't even exist on game consoles in the early 90s. What was it that kept us playing the same game over and over again in the 90s? You would think that once you complete a game, you would sit it down and move on to something else. But instead, we found ourselves revisiting that exact game once again, no matter how many years the game has been around. I guess the point I am trying to get at is that games back in the 90s to the early 2000s, these games pretty much had a ton of replayability. Games more than a decade ago had a ton of content packed into a cartridge or disc, and developers tried to squeeze as much as they could into a game, and as a result, gamers would crunch hours upon hours trying to unlock everything there is to be found in their favorite game. So, I guess you can say that Director's Cut, in a way, can be somewhat like DLC, but they were pretty much very few of them to be an issue for gamers. So, what about DLC? Knowing that games were fully fleshed out from beginning to end and packed with replay value back in the early days of gaming, is it a necessity for a game's longevity? I guess it depends on how you look at it. In my opinion, when DLC was pretty much non-existent, games felt much more complete. Fighting games, for example, had a ton of unlockables, from costumes, characters, color palettes, stages, and hidden modes. Now that DLC has been implemented, most of these unlockable features are now sold to gamers as DLC. It's rare to find a fighting game that still has a wide variety of content to unlock within games. Which makes me wonder, what classifies DLC? It's supposed to be content developed post launch of a game, but now we often find ourselves being sold day one DLC for an extra map or weapon. Look at Injustice 2 and Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite for example. Even though Injustice 2 does, I uh, guess you could say, have more to its product than Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, but right after the, these games launch, about a month later, the first batch of DLC is available. So it makes me wonder, why couldn't this content just been implemented in the base game if all it took was a month's wait to get a hold of this content? Now, how can we tell whether or not that added content isn't just content left out for the base game? Can we really say that some DLC is adding longevity to a game post-launch? If DLC is, is to somewhat increase a game's lifespan by providing value beyond its launch date, then why does it feel like developers are deceiving us into believing that they are delivering us added value to a game when most of its DLC feel like it's content missing from the base game? Now, I'm not saying that DLC is inherently evil because, because there's the developers out there that knows how to deliver DLC to its fan base just right. Perfect example is CD Projekt Red with The Witcher. That game provided true DLC. It added countless of hours of content that felt like pretty much an entirely new game added onto the base product. How about Nintendo with Super Smash Bros. Wii U? Every Smash Bros. game is packed with content at the launch of the game. Hell, even Sakurai said that he treat each of his Smash Bros. games as if it's the final Smash Bros. game. That's why he just try to cram and put as much as possible into each entry of Smash Bros. So the release of Mewtwo, Roy, Lucas, Ryu, Cloud, and Bayonetta felt well deserved and we can't forget how they provided free DLC for their new IP such as Splatoon and ARMS. DLC is supposed to feel like a fresh experience added to an existing game. It shouldn't feel like something left out. We know that the game development um, cycle is much more expensive today than what it was about a decade ago, and developers want to make back what they invest in designing games. But we are sitting in like a gray area between added value to a post game and leaving parts of a game out and package it as DLC later down the line. Games such as Street Fighter Cross Tekken showed us that developers lock away content on disc and sell it to us later and call it DLC. 
So, in this case, is it really prolonging the game's lifespan over time? Are we better off without DLC? And should developers spend more time developing their games rather than investing most of their time deciding on what DLC to implement during the game's development cycle? We have yet to talk about microtransactions, but we will definitely talk about that in another video. So, it's debatable whether or not that D DLC necessarily add longevity to a game, especially when games back a decade ago or so didn't have DLC but provided tons of replay value to its core. Now, I know this video is kind of short since it's something that has been covered and beaten for years now, but I want to hear your thoughts. Are DLC necessary for a game's lifespan or is it only specific on the genre of that game? If you have any questions or topics you would love for me to discuss, then make sure you're to leave your thoughts in the comment sections below. This is Mugen Lord, signing off. See you game fiends later. Peace out.